Hello, my name is Alexander Khairallah. I am an oral surgeon and a maxillofacial radiologist. I'm a diplomat of the European Academy of Dental Maxillofacial Radiologists and a member of the British Academy of Implant and Restorative Dentistry. I'm also the head of service of the imaging department at the Dental School of the Lebanese University. Our subject for today is about anatomical and 3D radiographical updates concerning the mental foramen. Dear friend, as you know, the mental foramen is the anterior exit of the inferior alveolar canal. At this point, as, as we can see on this periapical image, the inferior alveolar neurovascular bundle will split into two parts. A large trunk will get out of the mandible through the mental foramen and it's called the mental nerve and the small trunk, the incisive nerve, will continue anteriorly through the incisive canal. On this 3D representation, you can also see the splitting. After exiting through the mental canal, the mental nerve will be divided into three chiefs and will give innervation the buccal gingiva, the vestibule, and the lower lip. On a 2D periapical radiography, the mental foramen appears as a radiolucing area between the premolar apices. On an axial CD cut, and according to its morphology, the mental foramen, and to be more precise, the exiting mental canal, is seen as a radiolucing canal in the continuity of the inferior alveolar canal. As for its position, usually the canal is between the two premolars all in close relation to the apex of the second premolar. Sometimes we can have a variation in the positioning of the mental foramen, like in this case where you can see that the position is between the second premolar and the first molar on the right and on the left side. We can also have different sizes going from a small opening to a larger one. We can also have a variation in the level of the mental foramen on the right side and on the left side, as you can see on these cuts, axial cuts. The two foramen are not on the same level. Usually, the mental foramen is unique, as you can see on this clinical image. And in 7% of the cases, and as we can see on this 3D rendering and on the cross-sectional sequence, we may have a double mental foramen. Another case where we can see a double mental foramen, and the third one where we have a double mental foramen on both sides, the left side and the right side. In 1% of the cases, we may have a triple mental foramen, like in this clinical situation. On a CD reconstruction where we can see the three exits of the mental foramen. Dear friend, whenever we have two mental foramen, they can be on one plane or two different planes. And we have to locate them too carefully, especially when they are not on the same plane. Because being away from the first one when placing implant does not mean that we are away from the second one. Dear friend, let's see this case where we have a 40 years old female suffering from a paresthesia of her lower right lip after having six implant in the anterior region. The most distal right implant is retrieved in order to release the pressure over the mental foramen region. After a careful look at the axial cut, we will see that the implant is away from the mental foramen. But if we look carefully, 
we will see a ramification going anteriorly from the mental foramen and exiting buccally at the same level of the osteotomy. So probably the paresthesia is due to this ramification. On this slide, we can see a CD construction showing the crestal position of the mental foramen, the anterior buccal ramification of the mental nerve, and the empty osteotomy. On this slide, we can see a cross-sectional cut showing also the empty osteotomy and the buccal ramification. Dear colleague, usually the mental foramen opening is buccal, but sometimes we can have a fake lingual opening. This lingual opening can be due to the thinning of the mandible at this region. This is what we call the Coca-Cola shape of the mandible or the beautiful lady shape of the mandible where the cortical, the buccal and the lingual cortical are so thin and sometimes it can perforate. As for the shape of the mental foramen, usually it's ovoid or round depending on the path of the inferior avoral canal. If we look carefully at the axial section, we can see easily the inferior avoral canal is approaching the buccal cortical mandible and getting out directly through the mental foramen. This is why the foramen is avoid. The path can easily be elucidated by using a straw and cutting it directly near the buccolingual cortical, as you can see over here. Okay, and the section will be avoid. Another case where the axial cuts are showing the direct exit through an avoid mental foramen. When the canal is in the middle of the mandible, as we can see on those axial section, it has to do a curve before exiting the mandible, and the shape of the foramen will be round, as you can see on those axial cut. If we consider again the example of a straw, we can easily see why. If we look at the cross section at the level of mental foramen, we can have two situations. Either the inferior canal is at the same level of the mental foramen, or the inferior canal is lower than the mental foramen. The exit will be round when the mental foramen and the inferior canal are on the same level, because the inferior canal has to do only one loop in the buccolingual direction in order to exit the mandible. And during our surgeries, when we uncover the mental foramen, we can have an idea about the height level of the bone above the inferior canal since they are at the same level. In the second situation, where the mental foramen and the inferior canal are not at the same level, the neurovascular bundle will exit the mental foramen in two ways. The first one is through one loop in an apicocrestal direction, as we can see on this section. The shape of the mental foramen will be avoid with a little bony wall in the upper part, as we can see on this 3D virtual reconstruction, and on this 3D real reconstruction. During our surgery and by carefully localizing the mental foramen, we can place implant lingual to it, as we can see on this image. We can see in this video the lingual position of an implant according to the mental foramen. But we have to be very careful during our positioning because touching the inferior work canal will generate lots of problems for our patient. When the canal will do two loops before exiting in the basocrestal direction and in the buccolingual direction, the mental foramen will be round and we don't have enough space to place an implant lingual to it. Sometimes the inferior nerve 
will do an anterior loop before exiting through the mental canal. This loop can easily be seen on a carefully drawn panorex, like on this one, or this one. Whenever we have an anterior loop, we have to be very careful when placing implant anterior to the mental foramen. Because when we are placing implant, instead of being 2 mm anterior to the mental foramen, we have to be 2 mm anterior to the maximum of convexity of this loop. In order to see the anterior loop, we can easily follow the sequence of the axial cuts where we can see the inferior canal going anteriorly, then going back and exiting through the mental foramen. Another case showing the anterior loop of the inferior canal before exiting through the mental foramen. Dear colleague, due to the resorption of the mandibular crest, the mental foramina can be directly situated over the crest, like we can see on this panoramic reconstruction, and the cross-sectional reconstruction on the right side and on the left side, and on a CD reconstruction where we can easily see the position of the mental foramen over the crest. Dear friend, let's see this case. It's a case of 49 years old female who has a four weeks transitory paresthesia of her lower right lip after having five implants placed in the anterior region. As you can see, the implants are away from the mental foramen, who is positioned directly over the crest due to the posterior mandibular resorption. The paresthesia is probably due to the retraction of the flap by the dentist assistant. Sometimes, and in a rare situation, we can see the inferior canal splitting into two ramifications before exiting through the mental canal. Sometimes, and in a very rare situation, we can see an incisive ramification going back and exiting through the mental foramen, as in this case. See the image showing the exit of the reverse ramification. Dear friend, as a conclusion, I can say that a good anatomy knowledge, coupled with a good radiographic interpretation, along with a good treatment plan, will lead up to a problem free surgeries. If you have any questions, you can email me at alexanderkhairal at hotmail.com or alexanderkhairal at gmail.com. Thank you so much.